First things first, let's get some gas. Get it. Guys, gas in the tank and zero lights on this N54, 104,000 miles, clean title. Let me tell you guys how I got this bad boy. Now that we are officially home, guys, I think I owe you guys a little bit of a story or an explanation. <laughs> so taking you guys back, back to when I actually picked up this 335, um, me and my wife, actually, I had zero dollars, but I found this 335 on the internet, and uh, it was, oh, he was only asking pretty much 20, I think, $2,000, yeah. So around 2,500 or 2,000 with shipping and everything, it ended up being like 2,500 with registration and everything. So registration, everything, including shipping the car here from an hour, it was a $2,500. So basically, I got the car for $2,000. Clean title, all the gaps are absolutely perfect. There's no damage, and it was 104,000 miles. Again, clean title, no damage. The paint's in amazing shape. 335 by completely bone stock. So the reason I wanted my wife to go pick this up because I wanted to go ahead and just part it out, make some money off of this car, take off some parts, and uh, just, just the main thing that we needed the car for it was the cats because we needed cats for the 135. I don't want to do any shady stuff to get that car registered. I want to do everything properly and have proper cats and everything on that car. So to get the cats, we I was the people were selling for like a thousand dollars. I've been asking some of you guys. You guys were asking 800 to a thousand dollars. Like you know what? Let me get a car for two thousand dollars that pretty much somebody's selling four parts and uh, I'll just take the cats off of the car and then part the rest of it. If I can make a thousand dollars off the rest of the car, you know, I mean, I'll probably definitely make more than that. Then basically, I, I was trying to basically get cats for free by parting out this car and making two thousand dollars off the car. So all in all, I would get cats for free. I was really not trying to spend a thousand dollars on cats. I was like, hey, if I could just put in some bone, elbow grease and just, you know, part out this car, that was the end goal. But anyhow, uh, long story short, the car, when I went to go check it out, um, he said that the engine was blown, like on the, the, the Cra not the Craigslist, the Facebook ad, and I was like, okay, whatever, I just need the cats, I'll come with my trailer and I'll come get it. He's like, it actually has current tags, so you don't really need to come with your own trailer, you can just call AAA. So then I ended up showing up to his place, and unfortunately, the tags were expired, but he paid the registration for the next uh, for the next year. So if I was to get this thing to repass smog, I would have my registration up to date, but unfortunately, the tags are expired. So if you guys want anything about AAA towing, they don't tow a car with tags that are expired. So I had to go pay Enrique um, to tow it back to our house. It was $200 to get it towed. I'm throwing some footage here and there while I'm talking, because basically, I recorded this over a couple of days, and I really didn't want to bring this car into the channel, because this is going to be kind of like my side gig on the rear where I basically parting it out and try to get some parts off this car for my other builds because I have two other N54s like the 740 Li and the 135i. So yeah, I was just gonna be kind of in the background, maybe parting it out. I was gonna take off the headlights, take off the whole front end and just start taking off the fuel injectors, start selling everything. But you know, end of the day, I, when he started up the car, I was like, this doesn't sound blown. It just is a crazy bad misfire smoke, like fuel everywhere. Inside the RPMs was like this, the car was shaking. It's making like a huge ticking sound, like a rod knock. It was all really bad. Bad, but at the end of the day, I was able to get it down the street and back and I checked the oil and there was no cool in the oil or anything mixed there. And I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe this could be either spark plugs, ignition coils, maybe he doesn't know what he's doing or um, fuel injectors. He told me he did the fuel, he did the ignition coils and the spark plugs. I was like, huh, okay. So if he did those two things, um, then you haven't tried fuel injectors and fuel injectors, they cause some crazy stuff. I remember my 435, it was misfiring like crazy black smoke out the rear, literally sounded like a huge engine like meltdown because of a fuel injector. So when I ran the codes, it said misfire cylinder one in three. I basically took the car home and just pretty much started taking it apart, took off the fuel injectors, replaced it with two of my old ones. I had two uh, Index 11 fuel injectors um, laying around because I found some guy pointing out his car. I gave him $20 a pop. So $40, I got two fuel injectors. Went ahead and installed it into this 335 and I started up the car and it ran so, not, not perfect, but so much better. And I was like, okay, okay, so guys, we are this much closer actually just getting this thing fully running and I have the pink slip on hand, clean title, only 104,000 miles. When I got this thing, guys, and I even noticed it had the black interior, the no nav, which I know a lot of people like the no nav, the aluminum trim, which also looks really good. Unfortunately, it's not sports package, but you guys can always do a retrofit. But anywho, long story short, I was testing out everything. I'm like, man, everything works. It definitely probably is just the fuel injectors. Even in the engine bay, guys, everything looks super, super, super clean. The only thing I was missing was these two vacuum pumps. Uh, so that, I don't really 
really know if that really needs it to run right, but, and I was like, hmm, maybe this could be an issue. But then I called my boy Erlon, he said this shouldn't really affect anything too major. It shouldn't affect how the car is running, or maybe just a little bit, but not too much. And it shouldn't cause any ticking sounds or knocking sounds. So I'm like, okay, so let's roll this out of the equation for now. So we went ahead, popped this up, replaced the two fuel injectors. And once we actually did the two fuel injectors, like I said, it was running a lot better. I had my boy Nick help me code this. So he pretty much helped me code the fuel injectors in. And now the car is running like an absolute dream. It was expiring a little bit after just installing them, but once he coded them in, they worked perfectly. So basically I was only about like 25, again, 2,500 is all in, including actually my fuel injectors. So $2,500 and we basically got this car back up and running with zero lights. I got the car smogged and registered with current plates and tags. Just to show you guys so you guys don't believe me, I picked it up obviously with expired tags, but at the end of the day after getting it smogged, we have 2021 tags on there, which is pretty awesome. And I don't think I've ever gotten this lucky on a car in my life, but basically it helps to know a little bit about BMWs because a lot of people, when you take it to a normal mechanic and they hear those knocking sounds and it's misfiring and it's not the it's spark plugs, the initial quotes, a normal mechanic that works on Toyotas and Nissans would probably just say it's a blow motor. And that's what he ended up getting his diagnosis for. And I knew honestly when picking it up and actually starting it up, and mind you guys, he said blow motor. I showed up expecting to buy a blow motor. It did not sound like a blow motor. So make sure you guys, if you guys want to get some good deals like I do. I find some really good deals here and there. And honestly, sometimes by accident like this one and sometimes on purpose like my E46 or some of my other builds, you just have to go and just look. Go do car shopping. Don't just stay on your computer, lowball everybody. Go out and actually go meet people in person. You can offer them in person and they'll accept money that's a lot lower than the offer when you show up in person as well. And just check the car for yourself. Check if there's any cool in the oil and stuff like that. People say blown head gasket or rod knock or something like that. These cars really, it's really rare to have rod knock or blown uh, a blown head gasket on these N54s and any BMW to be honest in general, unless it's like an E46 or older. So just make sure to go check out the cars. You never know, you might be able to run into a gem like this one. But any long story short, this car was a $2,500 car. Now that it's registered, smogged, and it's legal on the road, and there's no misfiring, no lights on the dash, literally zero lights, everything's working on this car. It is now pretty much an $8,000 car, which is insane. And I don't need the car. I was gonna take off the cats, but I mean, now I might as well just sell it, the whole thing at, you know, as it is for $8,000. And it's gonna definitely help out the rest of our builds. So yeah, this is honestly not my flip. My wife got super lucky and this is her flip. So, I mean, she's gonna be helping out with the builds for sure. She's definitely gonna be using some of this money to, towards her 135 and building her 135 to be the real 1M conversion. I think it's gonna be absolutely insane. So that is a huge come up for the both of us. But yeah, guys, that brings us to today, which we're gonna be pretty much trying to fix every little thing with this car, making it absolutely perfect. Probably giving it a good wash, take some pictures of it and put it up for sale. But in the meantime, we do have one other issue and there's this, this weird knocking sound that basically gets louder and louder as you put your foot on the gas pedal. Let me go ahead and show you guys what it sounds like. From one to 3,000 RPMs, if I put my get foot on the gas pedal, you hear this ticking sound get louder and louder and louder, and it might be honestly one of the pulleys. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is just remove this little guy here, and uh, maybe even remove the fan, and just remove the belt. And uh, if we can just remove the belt and just diagnose and see if it's one of the pulleys, we start up the car without the belt on, and if we don't hear that sound, we are in business. If we do hear that sound, that means it's not one of the pulleys, it's something to do with the engine, unfortunately. Maybe like a lifter tick, it still means the engine's good, but it has a stupid lifter tick sound, which is gonna be annoying, but it's still good probably won't be able to sell for eight probably for six or something like that but still still a great come up but at the end of the day if we can just figure out what this is exactly the stupid ticking sound it, that would be absolutely amazing so without further ado let's go ahead and take out as much things as possible just to make that belt job easier Guys, oh, oh, that turned from a really good video. Oh, the coolant really came out. I don't know if you guys saw it, it hit me right here. It, my chin is burning so badly. Now I see why they don't, they say do not open your coolant tank. Oh, give me a minute, it's coolant everywhere. Let me just clean up this mess. It's literally everywhere. Okay, hold up. Guys, if you guys look in here, this hose, I could already tell it was just 
ready to snap and that's what happened there. I tried basically moving this whole hose behind here to sit behind this and then that snapped and that pretty much hit me right in the chin. Oh, guys, I, my chin is still burning. Oh, I need to wash my dad's car now. I can't even barely talk right now. I need to wash this car. Give me a minute, guys. I need to just go wash my face. All right guys, now that we have the fan out, we have so much more room now for the belt. Let's go ahead and just remove that bolt right there. And there's another bolt right here. This hose and this, we can move this backwards and actually get this belt off. All right guys, now that we have this hose that's loose now, we can pretty much now try to take off this belt and we can try to figure out which pulley is giving us the issues. Hopefully it is a pulley and uh, it'll be an easy and quick fix. If not, ah oh man, it will not be a quick and easy fix. Now that we finally have the belt off, guys, let's go ahead and start up the car and see if the sound went away. If it didn't go away, rip all this work and coolant and hoses. We're gonna have to spend so much money. Again, not a big deal, but still, that hose probably needs to get replaced anyways. But yeah, let's go ahead and start up the car. If that sound goes away, I'm gonna be so, so, so happy. Obviously, Obviously, we're gonna have no power steering, no nothing. So I'm just gonna start off the car and just hear if that sound is there. If it's gone, again, we're gonna be so happy. All right, guys, fingers crossed. Please, God. Nope, guys, that sound is still there. Darn. All right, going underneath the car, y'all. I'm just now noticing that this thing has barely, like literally I don't see any major leaks or any new leaks, which is insane. I've been driving this car for like the last week. Like no oil pan leaks. I'm not seeing anything major over here. Some like old leaks here. It's like dried up oil, but uh, I just wanna take a look at that pulley right there and see if that could be our issue. But even though I have the belt off of it, can it still make the sound? Maybe it's cause it's vibrating with the engine. I'm not really too sure. The sound that I'm trying to target looks like it is still coming from over here somewhere. So maybe it's one of the spark plugs that are kind of loose. I'm gonna go ahead and go through and just tighten up all the spark plugs because that's not something that I did. And uh, anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the belt back on there. The belt's also in good shape. And just try to reassemble as much things as possible other than uh, this this hose obviously we're gonna have to get a hose before we can take this thing home This car has every little piece and screw, so I'm actually gonna put everything back together just because of how like non-touch this car has been. It was literally, it's so perfect other than that one ticking noise. If I could just figure it out, if you guys can help me down below, just let me know what you think that sound is. That would be amazing, but we're still not done yet. We're gonna try to get that hose and fix that issue, but we're also gonna try to see if we can tighten up all the spark plugs, maybe we replace some of them and see if that makes a difference. Guys, now that we have all the ignition coils off, let's just go ahead and tighten up all those spark plugs. I checked them earlier, they're basically brand new, so I just have to re-tighten them all. I'm not even misfiring. So I'm just gonna tighten them all and hopefully they're all super loose, because if they're not loose, that's not our issue, but if they are kind of loose, it could be an issue. This point guys let's go ahead and take this hose and go get another one from a local junkyard so hopefully they do have one of these right now we we, we need it <laughs> so we can get this thing home today so and now we are taking the seven series just made it guys let me go ahead and get that new hose and i'll let you guys know just got the new hose boys let's go ahead and head back home and put this bad boy in
Surprisingly, today the car is actually pretty good, but it's a hit or miss every single day we take this car. <laughs> but yeah, let's go ahead and get that 335 hose back on. Hopefully it's not gonna be too hard putting that new hose in. Guys, this hose is in basically brand new shape. Like, check that out. Literally brand new OEM BMW one has the clamps, the gaskets on both sides. Wow, I got lucky on this. At this point, I need some distilled water. Shout out to my brother. He's heading out to get some distilled water right now. So huge shout out to him. Um, so while we're waiting for to get the distilled water, we did put in the 50% coolant um, so we can at least move the car for now. I'm gonna back up the car, go in and give this thing a wash, and also need to give my dad's car a wash because uh, we have coolant all over it. And if that stays, that's probably not so good. So let's go ahead and back up both cars, give them both a good wash. Um, this one much, much needed anyways. It is super filthy. We can might as well even take pictures of it while it's, <laughs> while it's fully cleaned up. Now, I probably could have washed it better, but I'm missing all my main rags and everything's at my other place. I'm gonna go ahead and try to bleed the car and put distilled water. My brother just went to Walmart and they have no distilled water, so I have to head home because I have a class in a little bit. It's okay to basically to drive 10 minutes. It's how far I left from here, so it's not too shabby. So I'll drive 10 minutes. Uh, basically, as soon as I get there, I'll take the truck later tonight, get some distilled water, and then bleed the system. So I'll do that later tonight, but in the meantime, it's gonna pretty much be perfecting this car, and I'm super, super, super happy about that. Unfortunately, we couldn't figure out what that little ticking noise is. Now, it's not that big of a deal, but I really want to perfect it a hundred percent because it is so perfect. Zero lights on the dash, like no major leaks or anything like that. I really, really, really wanted it to be a hundred percent, but it's all good. I mean, it's better than all my other cars, to be honest. I'm gonna be putting this up for sale pretty soon. I'm gonna be trying to detail it, make a full video on that, and trying to sell it. And I'll show you guys all that in one video as well. But yeah, guys, it is absolutely insane what you guys can get nowadays on the marketplace. If people say they have a rod knock or a blow motor or something, make sure to check it out because N54s, there's a lot of things that could possibly make it sound like it's a blow motor motor but it's not if you guys enjoy these kinds of videos where I show you guys to pick up a really cheap car and then fix it and then pretty much selling it or whatever I don't really do it that often mainly because first off it's illegal <laughs> you're not supposed to be flipping cars but I do it here and there um, if I need some money so maybe like once every six months it's not a big deal but yeah if you guys want to see another video like that in the next couple of months make sure to let me know down below without further ado guys that's gonna conclude this video I love y'all so much remember to stay humble I'll see you guys in the next one peace out and for those of you guys who stick around this long, there will be M5 content soon and 135 content soon. I'm just waiting on the parts.